homework assignment from last week. Uh, the professor, Jacob Edwin, taking us to sun summer school now with these assignments. And that assignment was the famous ladder match championship match for the undisputed title from July 1st, 2002, Monday Night Raw. Uh, that was our assignment. Uh, watch this today. I sat in the park and watched this. It was a great time. Um, this, this, is, this is a fond memory. And I think mm -hmm. it, we expressed when this was announced last week. This is a fond memory. Um, uh, this, this was more of a one-sided match than I remember it being. What's that? It was way more of a one-sided match than I remember it being. Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit, a little bit. But um, but there was like it was one of those. Hey, Jeff Hardy could do this, and I think they were still basically uh, Matt Matt and Jeff doing whatever you know at the time, right? Uh, well, I think this was before Jeff I had think, one of his problems, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they were just coming off of getting murdered by Brock Lesnar every week oh, for you know, yeah. however long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. were coming off of that. Didn't they just get split, too? They just got split. It was like uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. Okay. But a few yeah. weeks prior, something like that. Yeah, the, the first draft yeah. or the second draft. One, one of the brand extensions split up the Hardy Boys. Mm -hmm. like, And Matt, I think, was... Hadn't even started version one yet. Yeah, version so. one was only like a. I think it was like a couple months out still. Mm -hmm. And I think, they had I think just become WWE. The, yeah, like this was like right at the brand, like the the name change too. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you guys think? How how how, how is this playing out versus uh, what we've been watching? Um, you know, what, what what are your thoughts on the on the match itself? Oh, it was great. Mm -hmm. it was, every everything was there. The I, I still get a little squeamish now when I see chair shots right to the head. Oh yeah. Especially there were some there were some bangers in that. But the one sound of like and, and this will be forever the, like as soon as we got this assignment last week, the first thing that popped in my head was Jim Ross's call of make your go on kid, make yourself famous, and then the loudest gunshot like chair shot to the back you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Like it's I'm like, that was instantly what came in my brain. Like, and still plays mm -hmm. and it proves American badass undertaker is the best undertaker. <laughs> I, that, can, I, can I, can I jump in and, and just add on to that? Because mm -hmm. there is so much good stuff here for this match. And I, you know, you're talking about Jeff Hardy really being able to work the David versus Goliath style really well. Uh, you know, Taker showed up with his work pants on for oh, that yeah. match. Oh yeah. Um, just, I, there's, there's a, there's a sequence where he's beating down, um, overhands on Jeff and Jeff gets the comeback and just starts throwing flourishes and then Taker clobbers him and just cracks him. But then Taker like st says and and mothers to himself. And of course, this is 2002. There's no mics. No one's picking this up. So he's doing this just for the camera, on the hard side. And he's going, "Holy shit! That like he's shaking. Like those were some punches." Mm -hmm. Taker Taker is showing up. He's bumping exactly how, you know, to make someone who is a tag team specialist who's becoming a single wrestler. If you need someone to help you become a superstar. Taker was do did that, and that's a lot of respect that Taker shows there to bump that way. The chair shots to the head, especially the one from the last ride where Hardy pops down, grabs the chair, comes back up, cracks him. That's rough. Uh, Jeff Hardy with perfect ragdoll physics, and then the <laughs> ending and the the climb your kid. Jr. Oh, God, I miss this Jr. I miss this Jr. Oh, so yeah. much. Yeah, this was this was a raw. There was a main event on Raw. And I felt like Jr. Mm -hmm. was calling WrestleMania. This was and, was and so King good. was on point too. Yeah. King was on point perfectly as the and, you know coming as as the heel color over here. I'm yeah. listening to to King and he's just doing it perfectly to the point where he's when he's climbing the ladder and climb the ladder, kid, make yourself famous. King has panic in his voice because he's seeing Undertaker <clears throat> about to lose this title. Like he believes, and then Taker comes in with the chair shot from Gunpowder, and you know. But it's just so well choreographed and thought out and called in the match and, and just brilliant. And then the post-match with the I'm still standing, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, just this is a match that I think is probably one of my tops, top five matches, uh, just from a storytelling aspect. If you are a smaller wrestler, 
uh, watching this match and understanding how to do a David versus Goliath match is so, and how to call one for me, how to call a David versus Goliath match. Um, this is the blueprint. Matt, what about you? Uh, I think um, I'm not as high on this match as everyone else is, but um, I will point out that um, I, I, I will state up front, Undertaker in this period is freaking awesome. Um, but the bit where he has the match won, like five minutes in, and he's like starts to climb the ladder, and he stops, and he gets back down, so he can just beat up Jeff some more. That's bull crap. It's all when you've got the match won but you just want to beat him up some more when you pull the guy up but i mean i guess sometimes it works but to, to me i'm always just like ah oh, give me a break like like jeff's beaten and undertaker just you know decides i'm gonna go down here and beat him up, up some more and you know as it goes on it goes on and the other thing is like this weird like wwe logic and it happens a ton during this period in wwe where you can get just obliterated by the Undertaker, just like beaten up, killed, buried, tombstone, choke slam, whatever. But if he comes back and he pats you on your head, <laughs> you got elevated. Yeah, you know, yeah. like did you like did like did this yeah. did this help Jeff at all in the long run? Now I know there's some extenuating circumstances uh, when it comes to Jeff Hardy, but I don't know. Part of that was kind of like. It, it, it just reminds me so much of like so many other things we see like that with Undertaker, especially once he jumps over to SmackDown, you see him go through this routine with Cena, and then you see him go through this routine with other guys who you never hear from again. But you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's just and, kind of it's interesting. And and on the other side too, it's like with Hardy, it's like this was happening to him once every year or every two years mm-hmm. until years later when it finally stuck, you know, and and mm-hmm. he. You know, and or, or even after he'd gone to TNA and been back, you know, and it, where it was yeah. like, OK, where he was finally like a serious contender, you yeah. know. Yeah. I, but, I th- but, but And, it, and I, I, I understand why the people in the I remember watching this match when it happened. Yeah. And I understand why the people in that arena believed that Jeff Hardy was going to win that match, because I've been in arenas where mm-hmm. a title change was definitely not going to happen. But I convinced myself that it was going to happen. But me <laughs> sitting at home, I never thought Jeff Hardy was winning that match, not even when he was yeah. climbing that ladder for the last time. But that being said, Undertaker is awesome. Jarrah and the King accurately are in all time form on this match they are awesome bickering the bickering is so good in this match is like kings like needle and jr and just like how can you how can you feel bad for him? he brought this on himself he's the one who challenged the undertaker and jr is just finally like well i nobody deserves to get beaten up like it's just i love when like the king would just like back jr into a corner where it's just like there's no escape and jr can just be just like ah, you know <laughs> When JR gets he, like like to the point where he goes off play by play and starts doing a brief rant of color, like that's <laughs> when you know it's a serious thing. And that's when like the tempo picks up. And JR in, in the late 90s, early 2000s was perfect at timing those right when the crescendo was coming up. So he timed them perfectly to the end of the heel beat down to the face crescendo. And it was just, it just helped build on the commentary side. I remember watching this match live as a kid uh, at, at 12. So like, I remember this match. Yes. I'm, I was 12 when this match happened and I thought Jeff Hardy was going to win the undisputed. I was dead set on it because I thought he had it. It's a ladder. Jeff Hardy's a ladder specialist. He can climb the ladder faster. I forgot no wrestler in, in recorded history moves slower than when they're trying to climb a ladder, but <laughs> you know, these things, you you buy in and i bought in and and looking back on this match made me so happy because my my disheveled angry self looks back on this with 12 year old eyes and mm-hmm. i just lit up like a christmas mm-hmm. tree watch it, so. it was a good moment i loved it there's still a lot to like about it the other yeah. thing that was funny about this match um the reckless nature of like ladder and table spots around this period where mm-hmm. like if you watch it you watch a match today and they will like position the table like to the exact point if it's off by like a skosh they'll like scoot that table a little bit this one this match early on 
Jeff Hardy just like puts the table, puts the ladder on top of the Undertaker, climbs the steel steps, and just jumps off. It's just yeah. like, what are one, we doing? One, I don't one know. One last <laughs> thing, two ladders. Two ladders in this match. The short yeah. ladder used for all the spots and the big ladder for the climbing. Not 30,000 ladders, not a wooden ladder, spray painted to look silver. Two ladders, and they're working exactly with two ladders. And really, they're only working with one because the other one's just for climbing purposes. <laughs> and, it, and, and it's were, not up a lot. Really, they were really creative with the, the ladders, too. I loved when, he, uh, when Taker did the big boot on the, the ladder and like pushed it into Jeff, who was in the ring. When Taker was on the outside, it was cool stuff. So, good match. I'm, I don't want to sell it short. I'm pretty sure I remember hearing like an interview with Taker. I think it might have been even on the uh, the This Is My Yard DVD, where he was like, "I'd never been in a ladder match before, so yeah. I kind of let Jeff run the show on that." Which, yeah, you know, if that's like <laughs> if that's what happened, that praise. that takes a lot of trust. Mm-hmm. That's ringing yeah. praises if I've ever heard one. Because yeah. you know, if if Undertaker's coming to you and saying, "Yeah, book it up." Okay. Might, I, I, by the way, I might also be confusing it with Ric Flair at Edge, but I, I know I, I, I thought I heard with Taker and Jeff Hardy too. Mm-hmm. So but you could tell by the way Taker is performing in that match that he is trying to do his best for Jeff Hardy to make him, you know, make it a big match for Jeff. So absolutely. One one last small thing, and I'm uh, sorry, Sork. No one looked cooler in the world in 2002 than Undertaker with the undisputed title wrapped around his neck, driving his motorcycle back up the <laughs> ramp. No one in recorded history has ever looked cooler. I still <laughs> wish I could pull that look off. Because no version else of Taker. Absolutely. The best Absolutely. version I, I, of Taker I, I, and I'm the most underrated that. looking championship. I am. I am. A, it's. I don't think it's underrated. I oh, think that I is, love the undisputed uh, second, championship. Second best behind Big Gold, but yeah, it's just it, it just wasn't around long at all. That's no, all. Yeah. right. But it doesn't. That doesn't make yeah. it underrated. Like, no. yeah, I know, but it's underseen. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, that I'll take. Yeah, it. no, it, it's definitely one of my favorite belts. Um.